Well, we're here early at Suwannee Flying in Live Oak, Florida. It's just a little too windy to go flying yet, so let's talk about something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. About, oh, maybe this time last year, some turkey told me that there was a motor that was configured differently. Same engine as the one that I had that was running perfectly, only they put a 140 centimeter prop on them and they call the frames 150 centimeter or 1500 millimeters. And this is the culprit right here. He spends my money all the time. So he bought one and I bought the competing brand. So John, how did we come to the consensus that we needed to do this? We compared ourselves at 220 plus pounds each to a Tucker God who's like 150 pounds each. To a who? A Tucker God. Oh, yeah, I know. I think I know who he is. Yeah. And, you know, they're flying the same motor with the same prop, and they get off in a step or two, and Todd and I are running down the field. And you think this has to do with thrust to weight ratio and not technique or skill level? 100% thrust to weight ratio. Huh. It has made such a huge difference, this 140 prop on my takeoffs and your takeoffs, that I can't even tell you how imperative it is to have that little bit of extra thrust at our weight. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. This has been a game changer in percentage of failed to percentage of completed launch attempts, especially on the zero wind flying in the mornings when it's hot i have still blown some launches have you blown any launches i don't with think these? i've blown one really not one well, I, I blew a couple at don's house i fly um, 18 meter wings and i haven't blown a launch i it's with the exception of that morning at don's house i don't think i've failed a launch i've i've tried to reverse and said now there's not enough wind and spun around and done a forward yeah it's an amazing difference but leaning back into this thrust difference now, my, my other motor was a 130 prop spinning titanium framed propulse. And I went with the PAP, and John went with the Mac Fly. Um, John, what, uh, if you don't mind me asking, do you remember approximately what the MSRP, I don't want to know what you paid I for it. I think they're around 7,600. 7,600. I think that the PAP machine's MSRP was a little bit more than that, maybe. 7800 with the harness and the the prop configured so in the ballpark um on an msrp point so do you have anything that you think is a downside to going to these bigger frames john um honestly just just moving the thing around and maybe your pickup but when it's on your back you really don't notice it flying you don't notice it I, i'll tell you what i do notice is is i notice a little bit more response to my body positioning because i'm able to more effectively feel where the thrust vector yeah. if you dare call it that is yeah and, and i i i've both used that to my advantage and my disadvantage i could see you, that you know um what about safety and clearance? I, I, do you have any concerns about your ankles or your the backs of your calves? I have none yet. None to this day. Well, I guess we can say that until somebody gets hurt. But um, I, I think I think you need to be a taller guy to make this work. A taller guy and a heavier guy. Um, but secretly, I always knew. In fact, very early when I got into this. I said I want the highest thrust to weight ratio machine that I can afford to buy and I wanted a new wing and that turned out to be a pretty good combination so tomorrow we're gonna go to the scales with London Ivy he's here and he brought his thrust measuring tools we'll hook these two bad boys up and we'll compare and see which one has the most thrust For argument's sake, I kind of wish I'd have brought my other machine just to measure them comparatively, but I can attest to the fact that this one definitely has more thrust.